Welcome to Chase Talks, my name's Chase, and today I'm going to be bringing you something a little bit different. We're going to be speculating, or I'm going to be giving you my theory on what I think is going to happen in Star Wars Episode Nine. Now, I really think that before the end of the year, we're going to get a trailer drop. So before that happens, I wanted to speculate or just give a theory of what I think is going to happen. Now, I expect everything in my theory to be wrong. Pieces of it could end up being right, but I expect it to be wrong. I've also seen like some rumors and hints and things like that starting to drop out. I haven't looked at any of that. I don't know any of the rumors, the speculations, whatever, wh whatever is coming out. This is all just what's been rolling around in my own head on what I think is going to happen in the story moving forward. And I expect to be totally wrong. And if I'm right, my mind will be like... <laughs> explosion i won't believe that i'm right a lot of what i'm going to say is also based on events that happened in legends putting a canon spin on it so i think this movie is going to be the first of the new trilogy timeline where we're going to see a time gap so i think between because between episode seven and eight seven and eight was basically one day apart not even a day apart Seven happened, the next day eight happened, basically. I think that a few months, at least minimum, if not almost a year maybe, will pass in between episode eight and episode nine. In this time, I believe that Kylo Ren has taken hold or control of the First Order forces throughout the entire galaxy the majority of them at least throughout the galaxy some of them may like be turning against him maybe he's had to fight battles against himself things like that um because the first order didn't accept him as a leader but i think for the most part he's got pretty firm hold on the first order at this point with hux being a silent naysayer like he hates kylo he it's seen in the movies he does not like kylo he despises him um, and he really loved Snoke, and he feel, felt like he should have been the ruler after Snoke died rather than Kylo. And I feel like he's harboring that resentment for Kylo, and he's going to continue to harbor it through the entirety of Episode Nine. Now, in this span, I also believe that the Knights of Ren have been spread out. They were on missions for the invasion that the First Order planned that started with Starkiller Base attacking, and then the First Order invading the galaxy. And I think the Knights of Ren were spread across that invasion. So Kylo Ren is going to recall them. I don't know what the Knights of Ren were originally, but I think what the Knights of Ren we're going to see will be will be very similar to the, the Sith Inquisitors or the Imperial Inquisitors that we see in Star Wars Rebels. I think they're going to play a very similar role in the story. I think they're going to be very similar characters where they're going to be force wielders that would be like strong enough to kill like a clone, an average Clone Wars era Jedi, so like not very powerful force wielders. There's definitely not a Rey or Kylo level force wielder. So I think that Kylo Ren is going to have recalled them and sent them out with the mission of finding Rey because we know that Rey and what little bit left of the resistance there was escaped from their battle. Luke gave them time to escape. So I think that he's going to call his Knights of Ren to find them. So they will spread across the galaxy looking for the remnants of the resistance. Now in this time, I think we might start off with seeing Rey fighting one of them maybe and killing one of them. And this is going to be how Rey gets force wielding experience. Because now if you look at actually across the movies, Rey's experience building, dueling a force wielder, she doesn't have very much experience. She fought Kylo when Kylo was injured and she got manhandled by Snoke. That's her experience versus force wielders. The Praetorian guards, no evidence that they were force wielders. Um, they were just very powerful martial duelists, but she also got the assistance of a fully powered up Kylo. Um, and Kylo knew he couldn't beat them on his own, but if she was using the core tenet of Shi Cho while fighting, which is where she just released herself in the force and let the force fight for her, it could show why she overpowered the Praetorian guards. Now if she's going one-on-one -on -one with a force wielder, especially if it's an adept duelist, that's not necessarily going to work. So we might see her starting with dueling one of the guards, or not one of the guards, one of the Knights of Ren and overcoming them. 
and showing that she's developing her skills and she's becoming more of a powerful duelist rather than just a force wielder that relies on her connection to the force to actually do anything in a duel. Um, because really, especially like if Kylo and her would go 1v1 and Kylo's not injured, he didn't get shot by a bowcaster or hit by, or hurt by Finn or anything, I doubt that Rey would be as successful in a one-on-one -on -one duel against him. Um, even if their force tug of war shows that they're equally competent force wielders, um, or at least they have an equal potential, I don't think that her dueling skills are there to beat him. So she's going to need some dueling experience if she's actually going to beat him. So in this time, I think you're going to see her dueling one of them and killing one of them. Then it might go to a scene where Kylo has recalled his Knights of Run once again, and there are only a few left. So I don't know how many they started with. Let's say there might have been five Knights of Ren at the beginning. Five of Luke's students that left the Order with Kylo and became his Knights of Ren. Maybe two of them are dead at this point and there's three left. What, the, what Kylo would then do would send the three to hunt down Rey together and capture her and bring them and bring her to them. Yeah. They get sent out and they are tasked. So... They're going to go searching for it, and I think we might see a scene develop, much like the scene in Rebels, where they're fighting the Inquisitors, and then you see Darth Vader, like, descend down and above his TIE advance, and then he joins the battle later. We might see a scene like that later in the movie. But I think another thing that's very likely to happen is I think we're very likely going to see Hux betray Kylo Ren at one point throughout this movie. I don't know how Hux will betray Kylo, but I think he will betray Kylo, because he does not feel that Kylo is the one fit to rule the First Order. I truly believe that in his core, he has no appreciation for Kylo Ren. He wants to get rid of him. So I think he will betray him, and he will have the backing of the First Order to betray him. Now, either before this betrayal happens, or during this betrayal, I think we will see the Eclipse Star Destroyer. Now, in canon right now, we know that Darth Sidious had a Star Destroyer named Eclipse. Now we don't know what kind of Star Destroyer this is. We don't know if it's an Executor class Star Destroyer or we don't know if it is the Eclipse class Star Destroyer that we see in Legends. We don't know, we just know it's a Star Destroyer, a Super Star Destroyer rather, named the Eclipse. Now, in the Star Wars Armada tabletop game, they do have an Executor class Star Destroyer named the Eclipse. I do not think that means that the Eclipse is necessarily a Super Star Destroyer, but that's currently the only classification of Super Star Destroyer we have in canon. And they were just throwing that name to it because there's only like five named Super Star Destroyers right now in canon. There's not that many named. So I think they just threw that name on it um, rather than that being like, hey, guess what? This is canon. It's an executor class. But either way, even if it is an executor, we know that the Emperor had that sent to the Unknown Regions. We don't know why. We don't know why it was out there, if it was looking for something. We don't know too many details about the Eclipse, and we haven't seen it. I think that they're going to take elements of the Dark Empire saga. Um, and at this point, you may already have thought that I was going to draw that conclusion. So, if you don't know what the Dark Empire saga that is, is that is when the Emperor died, he used Essence Transfer... Um, and dark transfer to move his body into a, to move his essence his consciousness into a clone body of himself um, so the emperor was reincarnated and he actually reincarnated himself a few times after luke killed him until luke finally destroyed him once and for all and i think we're going to see that play out and i think the difference is the reason why the emperor took so long to reemerge and he hasn't emerged yet is because there's no way in canon to slow the, like, I think he had to normal clone himself, like, use the Kaminoan method of cloning to clone himself, which would mean that he would have to accelerate his own aging. But he accelerates his aging, he's going to accelerate age forever. So, he can either accelerate age forever and live, like, a very, many very short lives and have to continue lessons transfer himself, or he could live long lives where he has to age normally. I think he would choose to age normally. So for the about 40 years or so that takes place in between these two movies, I feel like we're going to see everything that happened, Operation Cinder, um, the First Order's invasions, Snoke, 
all of that was Palpatine. He planned it all for the sole purpose of buying him time and causing as much chaos in the galaxy as possible, leading up to his own full reincarnation. Like he had a clone that had his essence, it had to age normally, so baby, toddler, teenager, adult, he had to go through his life again. Um, until it got to a point to where he was an adult again. And at that point, he will re-emerge into the galaxy at this point. Snoke, I believe Snoke was nobody. Snoke didn't matter. People are like, who's Snoke? Why does he matter? Um, who is he? Who is he? What is he? Who is he? Where is he? What is he? Um, I think he was just going to be an Inquisitor. He's like a leftover Inquisitor, one that didn't die. There's like, what, like 11 Inquisitors in canon right now? And we don't know, like, the majority of them. So you could definitely be one of those 11 Inquisitors that we don't know. And that's just left over. Uh, Palpatine gave him the job to assemble the First Order, lead the First Order in his absence. He did that. And now Palpatine's going to come to kind of assume his rightful place. Now, we already know how Kylo Ren feels about the Sith. Kylo Ren has said that he is going to make something that is not Jedi or Sith. So I believe that the Emperor coming back and he'll see that as your Sith, I don't want to follow you, but Hux will want to follow him and that might lead to Hux's betrayal and then that could lead to Kylo Ren's redemption and Kylo and Rey together killing Emperor Palpatine. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, I'm prepared for it all to be wrong. I think pieces of it might be right though. <coughs> the most skeptical part is the Dark Empire. So I got, I'm skeptical of my own theory. Um, that's the part I'm most skeptical about. I don't know if they'll go that right of Emperor Palpatine reincarnating himself. But that could be just an amazing trailer. Like if it's just a trailer. It like goes like it's just like dark and it's like a teaser. You just hear the Emperor's voice or you hear the Emperor's laugh. He's like, I have returned. And then like laughs. Like that could be like such a cool trailer. Um, something to that effect. Uh, so it could definitely be really cool. Um, I think I would enjoy it. And it would be like a really cool way to show the stage of episode 7 episode 8. To where the First Order doesn't matter because it was all for Palpatine to try and return. And we could even see Rey and Kylo fail. Um, which would be crazy. And that could even set it up for a new trilogy. Or it could turn out that Luke didn't become one with the Force. And maybe he used the Force to teleport himself. Which was an ability in Legends. There were people that could use the Force to teleport. So maybe Luke used the Force to teleport. And we could actually see Luke duel Emperor Palpatine. Which would be crazy. A reborn Emperor Palpatine. You could see um, old man Luke duel a reborn Emperor Palpatine. Kill him. Kylo Ren redeemed to the light side. And then Rey, Kylo, and Luke together forge a path for a new new <laughs> republic and a new jedi order um that's what i think is gonna happen um i'm afraid to be totally wrong i think i'm totally gonna be wrong but i don't know it could be interesting i'm more excited to see before i even see a first trailer i'm excited to see how right i am and how wrong i am and i'm realistic in the fact that i know i'm probably gonna be wrong but that's gonna be it for this episode video so thanks for watching Remember to rate the video, comment the video, and subscribe so you never miss another episode of Chase Talks. Until next time, this is Chase, signing off.